we're asked to determine the relative and absolute extrema from the graph of the function. Looking at the graph of the function, notice how we have a continuous graph over the closed interval from x equals negative three to x equals four. We know the interval is closed because the endpoints are closed points. To determine the extrema of this function over this closed interval, we determine the critical points, which are where the graph turns, or where the graph has higher low points, which is also where the derivative is equal to zero or defined. And because we have a closed interval, we must also consider the endpoints. So first notice how we have a high point here, a low point here, a high point here, and then again we must also consider the endpoints because we have a closed interval. And now let's determine the ordered pairs for each of these five points. Working our way from left to right, the leftmost endpoint would be negative three comma, let's say the y coordinate is negative 11.6. Next we have this high point, where let's say the x value is approximately negative 1.4, and the y value is approximately, let's say 2.2. .2. Next we have a low point at the vertical intercept, which is zero comma one. Next we have a high point here, where the x coordinate is approximately, let's say 2.8, and the y coordinate is 10. And then finally the rightmost endpoint is the ordered pair four comma one. And now to find the absolute extrema, we determine the highest point of the entire graph and the lowest point of the entire graph. So notice how this point here, the leftmost endpoint, is the lowest point of the entire graph, and therefore this point represents an absolute minimum. So using the ordered pair, negative three comma and negative 11.6, we say the absolute minimum is the y value or function value of negative 11.6 at the x value of negative three. The highest point of the entire graph is this point here, which represents the absolute maximum. So using the ordered pair, 2.8 comma 10, we say the absolute max or maximum is the y value or function value of 10 at the x value of 2.8. So the y value or function value is always the max or min, and the x value is always the location. And now let's determine the relative extrema which are low points and high points of the graph in the interval around the point, just not the highest or lowest point of the entire graph. So working our way from left to right again, notice how this point is a high point on the graph in this neighborhood or in the interval around this point, and therefore this point represents a relative maximum. So using the ordered pair, negative 1.4 comma 2.2, we say the relative max is the function value or y value of 2.2, which occurs at x equals negative 1.4. From here, notice how the two remaining points, zero comma one and four comma one, appear to be low points. Let's first consider the ordered pair zero comma one. Notice how the point is a low point in the neighborhood around zero comma one, or in some open interval around this point, and of course, it's not the lowest point of the entire graph, and therefore it does represent a relative minimum. So using the ordered pair zero comma one, we say the relative minimum is the y value or function value of one at x equals zero. And now let's consider the point four comma one. This is where it does get a little bit tricky, and you'll want to refer to your specific text. Notice how it does appear to be a low point, but when we say it has to be a low point in the neighborhood around this point, or it must be in some open interval, notice how x equals four cannot be in an open interval because it's the rightmost endpoint of the graph. And for that reason, many textbooks will not consider an endpoint as a relative max or relative min. So in this case, I'm going, so in this case, I will not include this ordered pair as a relative minimum. I will go ahead and leave it off. But again, you should check with your specific textbook to see if relative extrema can be endpoints. I hope you found this helpful.